Powerful Cyclone Freddy and dangerous ex-Cyclone Gabrielle on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 12th. So an active southern hemisphere right now with Cyclone Freddy, a strong Category 4 on the Sapphire Simpson scale, Cyclone Dingani in the central Indian Ocean, and what's left of Gabrielle, which is still quite a lot, uh, pummeling New Zealand already at this time. Eight storms have formed so far this year. 109 days until Atlantic hurricane season and still no signs of life, which is good news. No areas of interest, but an interesting front moving through the east coast of the United States, I believe. There's a slight risk for the central northern part of Florida today. But in the areas of particular interest, Gabrielle on the right hand side there already affecting mainly the North Island of New Zealand. A 40% area of interest now in the Gulf of Carpentaria. Uh, that could be a, a quick spin up system uh, that forms off the coast there and affects the Northern Territory. There's Cyclone Freddy, uh, powerful 130 miles per hour category 4 storm right now according to our latest estimates and also according to the JTWC. And we also have Cyclone Dingani there on the left hand side, a much smaller system but also showing promise and could briefly become a hurricane equivalent cyclone. Freddy's intensity, just so you know, 130 miles per hour, that does make it a category 5 on the Australian scale right now as it powers away from the region. Latest satellite imagery, look out for some red areas here in that tropical zone where most of the rainfall is occurring. And you can see quite clearly the tropical cyclones that are out there. Can't see much of Gabrielle right now, uh, but it is headed out into that dead zone. And here is some more satellite imagery close up here of Freddy and you can see how it's been doing in the last few hours that I briefly making a decent appearance and then it got uh, smuggled away again looks like it might be trying to reappear soon quite a small system actually in itself Freddy uh, but very high cloud tops looking very good indeed in fact a whole ring of yellow right right now but the eye isn't particularly deep. Here's a close-up on Gabrielle, uh, it's split into two this imagery sequence by the looks of things. You can see earlier on and now the later imagery there where the convection, what's left of it is on the right hand side. Uh, but still looking very decent and certainly good on visible satellite imagery. And here's a close-up of what's going on in New Zealand right now. All of the storm's energy pushing in from the north and that massive band, really chunky band, still quite far away from the centre of the storm itself, already affecting the North Island and the northern part of the South Island of New Zealand. And a quick look here at Dingani, you can see there microwaves starting to show an eye by the way, and on the infrared imagery here it's looking decent as well. Wind shear on the right hand side uh, which will limit it. Sea surface temperatures around the globe right now, looking towards the Central Pacific and Eastern Pacific first, temperatures touching 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that's nearly 27 degrees Celsius. And you can see both scales there and you can see the Caribbean Sea looking decent there as well but no systems to ignite from it, 26 Celsius there. The Arabian Sea cool in the north but in the tropical zone pushing 27 Celsius down in the southwest Indian Ocean. Temperatures looking good there as well, 27 to 28 degrees in the Mozambique Channel recovering after Chaniso and out towards the main area of the Indian Ocean. Temperatures easily 27 Celsius, probably more, and same too for the southeastern region where those two storms are. North Indian Ocean, temperatures pushing 28 in the Andaman Sea, in the main ocean, uh, Indian Ocean 27, and near the coast of Australia, still very warm there, 29 pushing close to 30 degrees in a few areas, particularly in the Gulf of Carpentaria where that new system might form. Out in the Coral Sea, 28 Celsius, and towards Fiji, pushing 29. Out towards the uh, Philippine Sea and the Western Pacific, temperatures looking good there as well, 27 degrees Celsius, uh, and same too around the Philippines, and in the South China Sea, a little bit cooler, but still 26 degrees now off the coast of Vietnam. 
La Nina is still present in the central part of the Pacific, but look what's happening further east. Some decent warm anomalies starting to appear, and that could be the transition point now that we're really starting to see what could be an El Nino coming up later this year. In general though, it's around average sea surface temperatures in the tropical zones, western Pacific a little bit above. Oceanic heat content looks like this in the South Pacific right now. Uh, decent amounts, anywhere blues and greens, light blues and greens there onwards uh, is pretty decent. And look what's happening in the West Pacific now. The orange areas are expanding to the southwest of Guam. I'm certainly surprised to see that myself. But in the Philippine Sea, the energy is already starting to build and we've still got six months of warming before things start to simmer down again. Let's check the computer models then. This is the GFS showing what we're expecting now for the next five days. Freddy, obviously the dominant system and lasts longer. Uh, the other system there, Dingani, tries to make a run towards the Masterine Islands but sinks towards the end of that five day period there. And you can see that they're both doing fairly well for a while. Gradual weakening for Freddy actually. Uh, but maybe a little bit of re-strengthening towards the end of that five day period as it continues westwards. Really does strengthen a little bit more there at the end. This is what happens to Gabrielle and look towards the Gulf of Carpentaria for Australian interest there, a spin up cyclone. But Gabrielle does a number on the North Island of New Zealand in the next couple of days. Um, quite a few days ahead actually, three days it will probably impact the whole uh, islands there. Watch again as we watch this system push through. Gabrielle reaching a secondary peak, possibly near hurricane force just as it reaches the islands and uh, passes by the eastern coastline and then continues southeastwards uh, towards the more Antarctic waters. Uh, this is rainfall expectations over the next seven days. Not quite as much as we were initially expecting for New Zealand, which is better news, but it's still quite a lot in some areas. We are expecting over 10 inches, that's 250 millimeters, on the parts of the North Island, particularly along the East Coast. You can see there maximums of around 11 inches, that's pushing 300 millimeters. But also look at the rainfall in Australia from the other tropical disturbance, up to 16 inches there. There, that's 400 millimeters of rainfall along the Gulf of Carpentaria shoreline and also for parts of the east coast there of Queensland. So that's certainly something to watch out for as we move forward towards the next seven days. Certainly a rain event on the cards once again for Northern Australia. Um, that particular tropical cyclone probably won't get that strong. We're probably expecting a moderate tropical storm peak. Well in the moderate range is day 5 to 10 and you can see uh, Freddy continuing there and does eventually curve it does make that curve it doesn't get pushed further west and it completely uh, it does continue actually for quite a while all the way to day 10 there turns post tropical by that point of course but it looks like both storms do miss land um, and they won't really be affected by either of those two storms and once again you can see Freddy there and I'm surprised it doesn't get sucked in immediately by that enormous extrovertical cyclone but I imagine it will later. That's the serious stuff finished. You can take a look at the Force 13 merch store by scanning the barcode and taking a look at all of our items including our still waiting for Hone t-shirt and also our full season and individual storm animations by request bespoke made for you. Well in the silly range it's the Western Pacific that throws up a surprise there in the latter days of February a system that moves northwards and actually reaches typhoon status there a compact core continuing northwards and then northeastwards first time we've seen this on the model charts so far so i wouldn't get too excited west pacific fans but it is a decent storm it remains out to sea shouldn't affect any land areas it would be a sight to behold uh, but i would say that is quite unlikely at this point but keep watching that's day 10 to 16. Also in the Australian region and Indian Ocean, you can see two other systems that try to develop here, I think, uh, east and west on either side of the screen. You can see near the coast of Australia there, a very large system does develop in the end. To the west there, a system, a small system developing right at the end of that loop, but an enormous tropical cyclone that eventually forms off the west coast of Australia. Again, that is very tentative to say the least. I wouldn't uh, seriously consider that at this point, uh, but certainly a very large cyclone that could be a threat to Western Australia. 
and you can talk about that and anything weather-wise and around the wide world of tropics and tropical weather and general weather on our Discord server, discord.gg slash force13. And there's plenty of people waiting to discuss the weather with you or whatever else. Anyway, on this day, February 12th, 2006, we had a South Pacific uh, tropical cyclone of interest, Cyclone Vianu, a Category 1 later on in that day. There it is pictured, moving away from the Fijian Islands, moving generally south-southeastwards. Um, I am surprised that we didn't have anything more interesting on this date. I know that yesterday's, if we had done a tropical weather bulletin, would have featured Cyclone Holanda, which was affecting Mauritius. Well then, back to this year and what we've got ahead of us now in the Atlantic hurricane season. The first name will be Arlene. In the Eastern Pacific, Adrian, and in the Central Pacific, we are still waiting for Hone, but with an El Nino on the horizon, maybe its days are coming. In the Western Pacific, the next name is still Sanvu. In the North Indian Ocean, it will be Mocha. It's unlikely that a Northern Hemisphere storm will get the next name anywhere around the world, and storm number nine, but who knows. And finally, in the Southern Hemisphere, the next name in the Australian region is Herman. The Southwest Indian Ocean now is in Nali. And in the South Pacific, it's Judy. That's all for tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again on Monday night.